Sir John Falstaff? Yeah. I were young again, I swear. Yeah. My sword would settle. It is better that friends be your sword and settle it. And I have another idea on my brain. A Miss Anne Page, daughter of Mr. George Page. Oh, and a very pretty virgin. Anne Page, she that has brown hair and speaks small, like a, like a woman. Well, the very person. And her grandfather, God grant him a joyful resurrection, left her 700 pounds of gold and silver on his deathbed, given to her when she overtakes 18 years of age. It would be a good motion if you set aside your pribbles and prabbles with Sir John Falstaff and help arrange a marriage between Mr. Slender and Miss Anne Page. You say her grandfather left her 700 pounds? Indeed. And her father will leave her a pretty penny. I know this pretty young gentlewoman. She has nice gifts. <laughs> 700 pounds and possibilities are nice gifts. Yeah. Let's see this, Mr. Page. Is Falstaff in there? Do you want me to lie? For I despise a liar as much as I despise someone who is, is false. Oh, or somebody who is not true. Uh, the night Sir John is in there, but I beseech you to be ruled by your friends. I shall beat the door for Mr. Page. Who's there? Here is your friend Evans, and Justice Shallow. Oh, and the hostess of the garter over there. And young Mr. Slender, who may have more to say to you if matters go to your liking. I am glad to see you all. Very glad to see you, Mr. Slender. Is Sir John Falstaff in there? He is, sir, and I hope I can make peace between you. Spoken as a Christian ought to speak. He has wronged me, Mr. Page. Sir, he does in some way confess it. If it is confessed, it is not regressed. Is that not so, Mr. Page? Falstaff has wronged me. <laughs> Believe me. I, Robert Shallow, declare I have been wrong. So, Mr. Shallow, you will complain about me to the king. Tonight, you have beaten my men, killed my deer, and broken open my lodge. This shall be answered. Oh, oh I will answer it now. I have done all these things. <laughs> now, there it is. <laughs> Court shall hear this. Better for you if you kept it quiet. You'll be laughed at. <laughs> Slender, what complaint do you have against me? Your you rabbit-chasing rascals barred off pistol and nim. They took me to the tavern and made me drunk. And afterwards, they picked my pockets. Oi! You fat Mary cheese! It is no matter. How now, Mephistopheles? It is no matter. Slice, I say. That's my thing. Uh, we're simple, my man. Can you tell me, Uncle? Please, please, can't we settle this peacefully? There are three umpires in this matter, as I understand it. There is myself, Mr. Page, and the hostess of the Gotham. We three shall hear it and end it between them. Very well. Uh, Pistol, uh, did you pick Mr. Slender's pocket? By these gloves, he did. Is that true, Pistol? Word of denial, froth and scum, thou liest. By oh, my hat! And then the other one took it. For, although I can't remember what I did after I was drunk, I'm not altogether an ass. Oh, what do you say, uh, what do you say, Bardolph? <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> boy, sir, for my part, I say the gentleman drank himself out of his five sentences. <laughs> out of his five sentences? What ignorance is this? Oh, oh, and... Being so well lubricated, as they say, his purse must have slipped away of its own accord. <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> as long as I live, I'll never get drunk again. Except in honest, godly company, that is. God judge me, that's a righteous resolution. <laughs> you hear all these matters denied. You hear it? Denied. Oh. Take the wine and daughter. We'll drink indoors. 
Oh, heaven, this is Miss Ann Page. Yeah. How are you, Mrs. Ford? Oh, 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 Mrs. Ford, you are very well met. By your leave, good madam. <laughs> Wife, bid these gentlemen welcome. Come, we shall have hot venison pie for dinner. Come, gentlemen, we shall drink down all unkindness. Why, I would give 40 shillings to have my book of songs and sonnets right now. There you are, simple. Where have you been? Must I wait upon myself? Come, nephew, we are waiting for you. A word, boy. Listen to his advice, Mr. Slender. Well, I will do whatever my Uncle Shallow says. He is justice to the peace of the county, after all. But that is not the question. The question concerns your marriage. Indeed, sir, that is the point. It's a very point. Your marriage to Miss Anne Page. Why, I will marry her upon any reasonable demands. But, but can you affection the woman? Let us know it from your mouth, or, or from your lips. For many philosophers hold that the lips, by their very nature, are a subset of the mouth. Can you bring those good girls to the woman? Nephew Abraham Slender, can you love her? Well, I hope, sir. I will do as becomes a reasonable man. Oh, you must speak more positively. Will you, upon a dowry, marry her? I'll do greater things than that at your request, oh, Uncle. No, no, no. Understand me. Understand me, dear nephew. What I do is to pleasure you. Can you love her? Well, I will marry her, sir, if that's your request. But if there be no great love at the beginning, yet heaven may decrease it upon better acquaintance. Uh, I hope familiarity will grow more contempt, but if you say marry her, then I'll marry her. On that I'm dissolved and dissolutely. Uh, here comes Miss Anne. Ah, uh, would that I were young for you. <laughs> the dinner is on the table. My father desires your worship's company. Will it please you to come in, sir? Oh, um, I'll eat nothing. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm very well. The dinner awaits you, sir. Oh, no, I'll eat nothing. <laughs> Go, uh, simple. You're my man. Go. Wait upon my uncle Shallow. A, uh, a justice of the peace must sometimes depend upon his friend for a servant. But still, I only keep, what is it, uh, three men and a boy? That is, until my mother is dead. Sometimes I feel like I'm a poor gentleman born. <laughs> I cannot go in without your worship. They won't sit until you come. Oh, I'll eat nothing. Thank you. Please, sir. Walk in, sir. Uh, I, I'd rather walk over here, thank you. I, uh, I bruised my shin the other day playing sword and dagger with my fencing master. Uh, get this, three bouts for a dish of stewed prunes, and I cannot stand the smell of hot food since. Come, my dear Mr. Slender, we're waiting for you. Oh, uh, I'll eat nothing. Thank you, sir. By cock and pie, you shall not choose. Come, sir. You lead the way? Oh, come on, sir. Miss Anne, you go first? No, I... Uh, please, sir, go on. I, I won't go first. Truly, I won't do you that wrong. Please, sir. Uh, uh, I'd rather be unmannerly than troublesome. <laughs> Go to Dr. Caius's house, the French surgeon. There you will find a Mrs. Quickly, who is employed there as his nurse, or, or his dry nurse, or, or his cook, or his, his washer and his ringer. Give her this letter. She is a good friend of Miss Anne Page, and this letter asks her to solicit your master's desires. Now go ahead, go ahead, go, go, go. I want to get back to supper. There's apples and cheese to come. Ah! 
Ha, my hostess of the garter. <laughs> what say you, my bully rogue? Speak scholarly and wise. Oh, truly, my hostess, I must release some of my followers. <laughs> I'm spending ten pounds a week. But you're an emperor, a Caesar, a Kaiser, a vizier. I will help you. I will hire Bardolph. He shall tap, he shall draw wine, he shall bartend. Oh, make it so, my good hostess. I have spoken. Follow me. Bardolph, follow her. A tapster is a good trade. Good uh, <laughs> Oh, it is a life I have desired. <laughs> and guess what? I will prosper. <laughs> oh, basing you, you white. Whilst he the spigot wields? He was conceived in drink. It is his humor. Oh, I am glad to be rid of that tinder box. His thefts were too open. His filching was like an unskillful singer. He could not keep time. <laughs> well, which of you knows of Mr. Ford of this town? I know of this man. He is of substance good. Ah, my honest lads. Let me tell you what I am about. Two yards and more. Oh, no quips now, Pistol. It is true I'm in the waist, two yards about. But uh, I am not now about waste. I am about thrift. Briefly, I mean to make love to Ford's wife. I spy entertainment with her. She gives the leer of, of invitation. <laughs> The tenor of her voice, English rightly, is, I am Sir John Falstaffs. He has translated her humor out of honesty and into English. <laughs> well, the report goes that she bears her husband's purse. Ah, I have here written a letter to her and another to Paige's wife, who just now gave me good eye, too. Oh, she examined my parts with most judicious glances. Oh, sometimes the beam of her view gilded my foot, and sometimes my portly belly. <laughs> did, did the sun upon a dunghill shine? <laughs> oh, she did scorch over my exterior with such greedy glances that the appetite of her eye scorched me like a burning glass. <laughs> Here's another letter to her. She carries the purse too. These two shall be my East and West Indies, and I shall colonize and exploit them both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You bear this letter to Mrs. Page, and you this to Mrs. Ford. We shall prosper, lads. We shall prosper. <laughs> shall I, Sir Pander of, of Troy, become? Then Lucifer take all. <laughs> I will run no base humor. I will keep the behavior of reputation. Robin. You bear these letters. <laughs> Sail like a pinnace to those golden shores. Rose, haste, away. Plod, trot away on the hoof, banish like hailstones go. Take shelter, pack, scram. Hasta la vista, baby, you're fired. <laughs> oh, Falstaff shall learn the humor of the age. <laughs> You will revenge with wit or steel. With both humors, I. I will discuss the humors of this love with Paige. And I to Ford shall ick unfold how Falstaff, Bartlett vile, his dub will test, his gold will hold, and his soft couch defile. I will incense Paige. My revolt is dangerous. It is my true humor. I second you. Troop on. Go to the 
window, girl, and watch for my master. Yes, ma'am, I'll go watch. She's a kind, honest, and loyal servant, I promise you. Not a telltale, or a troublemaker, or a worse fault. If she's given to prayer, she's a bit peevish in that, in a way. But nobody's perfect. You said your name was Peter Simple. Uh, yes, and it's kind of funny because I'm actually very complicated. And Mr. Slender I... is your master? <laughs> Indeed. Um, Soft-spoken man, correct? Indeed. And he holds his head high and has a bit of a gait to his walk. Truly. <laughs> Olsen and Paige, no worse fortune. Tell Parson Hughes, here and I will do the best master. for me. Oh, here, here, quickly, 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 quickly. Wait, wait. <laughs> you shall walk. Yeah. Oh. Uh, run, babe, go look for my master. He's been gone all day. I hope nothing is wrong. <laughs> I gave my love a cherry, a cherry with no stone. What is that you I see? I did, 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 did. A chicken? Shh. <laughs> oh, I do not like these toys. Pray, you go and fetch me in my closet and bought in there. Is it books? A green books? Do it then what I say. <clears throat> It's a green box. Oh, oh look at it. One moment. A green box. My That's English is so box. good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, green box. Mm. Glad he did not go in there himself and seeing the young man, he would have lost his mind. Master, is this your box? Ah, we oui, met him on bucket. Bucket. They pass quickly. They. <laughs> I am desire men not in the court. Oh, by my throat I tear it too long. Oh, now, courage, you blame. Oh, there are some simples in my closet that no for the world I shall not leave behind. Oh, I can get them for you. It's fine, it's just simples in my closet. I can handle that. Thank you. hiding in my closet. <laughs> oh, please be content. Like I said, he was coming to deliver a message to me from Parson Hughes. Yes, uh, it, it, it's my desire that, uh, well, uh... <laughs> Quiet uh, your tongue. You, speak of your tale. Well, I, I, I'm of a desire to speak to this gentlewoman, your maid, your cook, or whatever. Uh, in any event. To, to put in a good word with Miss Anne Page on behalf of my master in terms of marriage. <laughs> Sir Hugh, send you. About Miss Anne Page? <laughs> you may go. It is no good for you to daddy here. Go! That is my bedchamber. You just came out of the closet. You're not ready for that. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> Winning Patty. <laughs> uh, but Sir Hugh. Sir Hugh. I shall get all his two stones. And he will not have a stone to store at his dog. For I, myself, of course, will marry Antage. Sir, the girl loves you, and all will be well. We must give people leave to talk. Vaga, if I have no empage, I shall turn your sweet head out of my door. 
<laughs> uh, I must go to court now. Ah, we Maraja! You will have a fool's head, Dr. Chaos, if I know Anne's mind, and no one in Windsor knows Anne's mind better than I. <sighs> Mrs. Quickly. Oh yes, come on in. What's the news? How's pretty Miss Anne? Well, she, you're, she's pretty. She's your friend. Will I succeed, you think, or will I lose my suit? Oh, we leave it in God's hands. <sighs> Mr. Fenton, I swear the girl loves you. Do you, do you have a wart over your eye? Yes, I have. What of it? Well, your aunt and I were talking about that very wart for over an hour. I have never laughed but in her company. Well, I shall see her today. Uh, here's some money for you. If you see her before me, commend me to her. Very well. And we will talk about the wart and the other wooers the next time we meet. Well, I have to go now. I'm in a hurry. Farewell, Your Worship. He is an honest gentleman. in the holiday time of my beauty, and I am subject to them now. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Ask me no reason why I love you. You are not young, no more am I. <laughs> Go to then their sympathy. You are merry, and so am I. Ha ha, then there's more sympathy. <laughs> you love wine, and so do I. Would you desire better sympathy? Let it suffice you, Mrs. Page, if the love of a soldier can suffice, that I love you. I will not say pity me, it is not a soldier-like phrase. But I say love me. John Falstaff? Oh my god! <laughs> what a wicked, wicked world! For one who is well nigh worn to pieces with age to pose as a young gallant? What careless behavior! Did this fat drunkard pick out my conversation that he dares to approach me this way? <laughs> Why, he hasn't been three times in my company? What did I say to him? Heaven forgive me. How shall I be revenged on him? For revenged I shall be, as sure as his Guts are made of puddings. <laughs> Page, Mrs. Page. Believe me, I was going to your house. And believe me, I was coming to yours. What's the matter, girl? You don't look so good. Well, I have a document right here proving the contrary. If I were willing to go to he hell for an eternal moment, I could be knighted. What? <laughs> That's ridiculous, Sir Alice Ford. Here, read. Read. See how I might be knighted. What tempest washed this whale with tons of oil in his belly a short Windsor? How might I be revenged on him? I think the best way is to entertain him with hope until the wicked fires of lust melt him in his own grease. <laughs> Did you ever read the like? Letter for letter. But the name of Page and Ford differs. Here is the twin brother to your letter. But let yours inherit first, for mine never shall. You know, he must have a thousand of these letters with blank space for different names. Sure, more. 
and these are the second edition. I would rather be a giantess and lie under Mount Pelion. <laughs> I will find you twenty lascivious turtle doves before I find one chaste man. Why, these are exactly the same. The very hand, the very words. What does he think of us? Let us be revenged on him. Let's appoint a meeting, give him show of comfort, and lead him with baited delay until he has pawned his horses to the hostess of the garter. I am willing to act any villainy against him that will not sully my chastity. <laughs> oh, that my husband saw this letter. It would give eternal food to his jealousy. Why, look, there he comes. And with my husband, too. My man is as far from jealousy as I am from giving him cause. And that, I hope, is an unmeasurable distance. You are a happier woman. Let's conspire together against this greasy light. Oh, let's. <laughs> <laughs> Why, sir, my wife is not young. Tis no matter. He woos both high and low, both rich and poor, both young and old. Page. Falstaff loves my wife, wife with liver burning hot. Take heed, have open eye, for thieves do foot at night. I will be patient. I will find this out. I was to have borne a humored letter to her. My name is Nim. He loves your wife. That's the long and short of this humor. My name is Corporal Nim, and I speak the truth. My name is Nim, and Falstaff loves your wife. Really? Nothing? <laughs> I will seek out this Falstaff. I never heard such a drawling affecting you wrote. You heard what the knave told me, did you not? And you heard what the other told me. Do you think there is truth in them? Forget him. These that accuse him of courting our wives are a yoke of his discarded lackeys. His enemy since they're out of his service. They were his people? Indeed they were. I like it no better for that. Does he live at the Garter Inn? <laughs> he does. And if he intends this voyage on my wife, I will gladly turn her loose on him. And if he gets anything out of her other than sharp words, let it lie on my head. <laughs> <laughs> Page is a secure fool and stands firmly on his wife's honor. I cannot satisfy myself so easily. My wife was in Falstaff's company at Page's house. And what they did there, well, I don't know. Well, I will look into it. I have a disguise to sound out Falstaff. If I find out my wife is honest, well, I only lose my labor. She is otherwise, then it is labor well spent. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, uh, let her approach. You may come in, ma'am. Your worship, may I have a word or two? Oh, 2,000, fair woman, and I'll give you the hearing. Well, there is one uh, Mrs. Ford. I myself reside with Dr. Thais. <laughs> oh, you speak of Mrs. Ford. Um, may we speak nearer, sir? Oh, no one will hear us. <laughs> My, my page is, is one of my own. Is that so? Then may God bless him and make him his servant. No, what this about is... her? Well, she's a good creature. Huh. Or was. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, your worship is a naughty boy. <laughs> oh, heaven forgive you and us, I pray. But, but Mrs. Ford, come now. What about Mrs. Ford? Hmm. Well... This is the short and long of it. You have got her in such a quandary. It is wonderful. 
and the best courtiers, when the court met at Windsor, could not have brought her into such a quandary. <laughs> there have been knights and lords and gentlemen and their coaches, <laughs> coach after coach, letter after letter, gift after gift, in such extraordinary forms that <laughs> have stolen any woman's heart. Uh, but I promise you, not one got so much as a wink from her. <laughs> I promise you, not one got so much as a sip with her. The proudest of them all. <laughs> no, with her, there is but one. <laughs> but what does she say about me? <laughs> oh, be brief, my good C. Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> well, she has read your letter and thanks you a thousand times. And? And she gives you to know that she will be away from, uh, her husband will be away from home between um, 10 and 11? 10 and 11. Yes, 10 and 11, and you may come by and see the picture she says you know of. <laughs> oh, 10 and 11. <laughs> Woman, commend me to her. I shall not fail her. Very well. Oh, I do have another message for you, sir. Mrs. Page sends her hearty condemnations. But if I might tell you to your ear, she is a very modest and virtuous wife. Why, no one is more virtuous and modest in Windsor. The woman does not miss a morning or evening prayer. But she does give to tell you that her husband is rarely away from home. Though she does wish there would be a time. I have never known a woman to dote over a man so. You must have some charms about you. Oh, oh no, none at all, other than the attraction of my good parts. Uh, I have no other charms. <laughs> Bless your heart, sir. But please, uh, tell me this. Uh, have Ford's wife and Paige's wife told each other how they love me. <laughs> oh, that would be a trick indeed. Told each other, indeed. Uh, no, but Mrs. Page does ask that you send your little Page. Her husband is quite affectionate of the little fellow, and Mr. Page is a very honest man. Why, no wife in Windsor has it better than she. Do as she will, say as she will, spends as she will, goes to bed as she will, rides as she will, is in type, and all as they wish. <laughs> yes, if you wish to please her, you must send your little page. Uh, why, I will. <laughs> and he could be your go-between so you may know each other's minds. Uh, woman, uh, very well. Uh, commend me to them both. And Yes. No. Mm -hmm. uh, here is a purse. I am your debtor. Uh, mm -hmm. Boy, go along with this woman. Come on. Oh, this news distracts me. <laughs> oh, good party. I thank you. After the expense of so much money, will you make me a profit now? <laughs> they may say it is grossly done, but if it is fairly done, it is no matter. <laughs> ah, here's. <laughs> Sir John! <laughs> oh, pardon. Uh, that is a Mr. Brook here to see you and has sent you a brand new, unopened draft of wine. <laughs> Brooke is his name? Yes, sir. Well, let him come in. <laughs> such brooks are welcome to me that overflow with such liquor. <laughs> oh. God bless you, sir. <laughs> and you, sir, you wish to speak with me? Indeed, if I may impose upon you, sir, with so little introduction. Well, not at all, sir. What is your will? I am a gentleman who has spit much. My name is Brooke. Well, good Mr. Brooke, 
I, I desire more acquaintance of you. Good, Sir John. They say if money goes before, all roads lie open. Oh, money is an excellent soldier. Indeed. And I have a bag of it here. Oh, that troubles me. I hope you'll help me bear it, Sir John. Take half or all for carrying it. Sir, how do I deserve to be your porter? I will tell you if you will give me a hearing. Uh, oh, speak, Mr. Brooke. I'm pleased to be your servant. Sir John, I hear that you are a scholar, and you have been a man long known to me. I will discover something to you that must reveal my own imperfection. Very well, sir. Proceed. There's a gentlewoman in town. Her husband's name is Ford. I have long loved her and followed her, seeking out opportunities to meet her. I have given her presents. I have pursued her as love has pursued me. But whatever I've merited, either by my mind or my wealth, I have received nothing in return, unless you count experience to be a jewel. But have you received any promise of satisfaction at her hand? <laughs> Alas, my love is like a fine house erected on another man's ground. Why are you confessing this to me? When I have told you that, I will have told you all. Some say that Mrs. Ford appears honest to me, yet in other places they have heard a more sinister construction made of her. Now, Sir John, here's the heart of my purpose. You are a gentleman of excellent breeding authentic in your place and person, generally admired for your many warlike, court-like, and learned accomplishments. <laughs> oh, oh, sir. <laughs> Believe it, sir, for you know it. Here is the money. Spend it, spend it, spend more, spend all I have. Only give me enough of your time in return to lay siege on the chastity of this Ford's wife. Use your art of wooing. Win her consent. If any man can, you can, yeah. sir. I depend on you to drive her away from the defense of her purity, her reputation, her marriage vows, her pride, and a thousand other defenses which are now too strongly embattled against me. What do you say, Sir John? Oh, good, Mr. Brooke, first. I will make bold with your money. <laughs> Next, give me your hand. And last, as I am a gentleman, you shall enjoy Ford's wife. Oh, good sir. I say you shall. I have a meeting with her shortly and by her own appointment. Immediately before you arrived, her go-between was here. I have a liaison with her between 10 and 11, Mr. Brooke, at which time that jealous fool, her husband, will be away. Come back tonight, Mr. Brooke, and I shall tell you how I prospered. I am blessed with your acquaintance. Uh, do you know Mr. Ford, sir? Hang him, the poor cuckoldy knave. No, I don't know him, and I'm wrong to call him poor. They, they say the jealous oaf has masses of money. <laughs> I will use his wife as the key to the scoundrel's treasury. I will unlock his cash box with my, <laughs> with my good parts. <laughs> I wish you do, Ford, sir, so that you could avoid him if you saw him. Oh, hang him! I will stare that weasel out of his wits. I will awe him with my cudgel. It shall hang like a meteor over the cuckold's horns. Come back tonight, Mr. Brooke, and you shall see Mr. Ford as a clown and a cuckold. <laughs> Meet me here tonight. <laughs> what a damn Epicurean rascal is this? My 
heart is ready to crack with impatience. Who says my jealousy is rash? My wife has sent to him. The hour is fixed. The match is made. Would any man have thought this? See the hell of having a false woman? My bed shall be abused. My treasury ransacked. My reputation gnawed at. Page is an ass, a secure ass. He'll trust his wife. He'll not be jealous. I'd rather trust an Irishman with my whiskey bottle, a horse thief with my thoroughbred, than my wife with herself. She plots, then she ruminates, then she devises, then I am betrayed, betrayed. God be praised for my jealousy. 11 o'clock the hour. I will prevent this, expose my wife, be revenged on Falstaff, and laugh at Paige. I will start now. Better three hours too soon than a minute too late. Damn! 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 Cockalt! Cockalt! <laughs> she can be. I think if your husbands were dead, you two would marry. Be sure of that <laughs> to two other husbands. <laughs> Where did you get this pretty weather cock? What is your knight's name, boy? Sir, Bar Sir John Falstaff. Sir John Falstaff? <laughs> I can never hit on his name. He and my husband are friends. So is your wife home? Indeed she is. Excuse me, sir. I am sick until I see her. Has Paige any brains? Has he any eyes? Has he any thinking? Why, this boy will carry a letter 20 miles as sure as a cannon will shoot point blank. Mrs. Paige is going to my wife, and Falstaff's boy is with her. And Falstaff boys with her. Our wives share damnation together. Well, I will catch this lecherous knight. Torture my wife. Pluck the veil of modesty from the so seeming this page and see all my neighbors applaud. I will Catch. The clock gives me my cue. I will find Falstaff. I will search for Falstaff. And I will be praised for this rather than mocked, for it is positive as the earth is firm that Falstaff is there. Gentlemen. I have good cheer at home. Won't you all come with me? I must excuse myself, Mr. Ford. As must I. We have an appointment to dine with Miss Ann Page, and I wouldn't miss that for more money than I'll speak of. We are hoping for a match between Ann Page and my nephew Slender. And today, we get our answer. 
I hope that I have your goodwill, Father Page. You have, Son Slender. But my wife, Doctor, favors you. Mm, they may, she loves me. <laughs> Might not squeak a candy so much. <laughs> but what do you say to the young Mr. Fenton? He capers, he dances, he has the eyes of youth. He, he writes verses. He smells like April and May. <laughs> <laughs> He will carry it. He will carry it, I tell you. Not with my consent. I promise you. The boy kept company with the wild Prince Hal. He's too high born. He knows too much. He won't repair his fortune at my expense. If Fenton takes her, he will take her without my money. That waits on my consent. And my consent won't go his way. Please, won't some of you come home with me for dinner? Besides your cheer, I'll show you a monster. <laughs> Mr. Page, Dr. Hugh will come. Mr. Page, and you? And you, Sir Hugh? <laughs> Very you will, sir. Very you <laughs> will. Farewell, my friends. I'm off to see my honest knight, Falstaff, and drink sweet wine with him. <laughs> I imagine I will see him first. Will you come with me, gentlemen, to see this monster? knows nothing of your being here, ma'am, and has threatened to put me in everlasting liberty if I tell you he's coming. He swears he'll turn me away. Well, you're a good boy. I'll go hide now. Do so. Go. Tell your master I am alone. Mrs. Page, remember your cue. If I don't act it, kiss me. We'll deal with this gross, watery pumpkin. <laughs> we'll teach him to know turtle doves from James. <laughs> Have I caught you, my oh. heavenly jewel? Well, if so, let me die, for I have lived long enough. Now is the period of my ambition. Oh, this precious hour. <laughs> oh, my sweet Sir John. Mrs. Ford, I cannot lie. I cannot pose, Mrs. Ford. I cannot pose, Mrs. Ford. I sin in my wishing. I wish your husband were dead, so I could make you my lady. <laughs> I your lady, Sir John? Alas, I would make a pitiful lady. Oh, no. Let the court of France show me such another. Your eye would emulate a diamond. You're a tyrant to deny it. You would make an absolute courtier. Oh, I see you as you would be. If fortune, not nature, had been your friends, you cannot hide it. You are a paragon. <laughs> Believe me, I am no such thing. Then what has made me love you? Mrs. Ford, I cannot, I cannot flatter and say you are like this or like that, like those lisping upstarts that look like women dressed in men's clothing and who smell like perfume shops. I cannot. But I love you. I love you. I love none but you. And you deserve it. Do not betray me, sir, for I fear you love Mrs. Page. Oh, you might as well say, I love to wallow in garbage. We'll see about that. Heaven knows how much I love you. And you will soon know, too. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Ford, Mrs. Ford, 
Mrs. Page is at the gate, sweating and puffing and looking wild, begging to speak to you at once. Oh, uh -huh. well, I can't let her see me. I'll hide. Hurry, do so. She's a terrible gossip. I knew this would come in handy. <laughs> what is the matter? Oh, tell me, Mrs. Page. Oh, whoa, oh, Mrs. Ford. What have you done? You're shamed. You're overthrown. You're ruined. You're undone forever. Why? What is the matter, Mrs. Page? Oh, oh, Mrs. Ford. To have such an honest husband and to give him such cause for suspicion. What cause for suspicion? What cause for suspicion? Shame, Mrs. Ford. Why? What is the matter, Mrs. Page? Your husband is coming here with all the officers of Windsor to search for a gentleman, he says, is in your house by your consent to take advantage of his absence. Alas, you are undone. Undone? Undone. Your husband is coming here. I ran ahead to warn you. If you know yourself clear, why, I am glad of it. But if you have a friend here, convey him out. Come to your senses. Defend your reputation, or bid the good life farewell forever. Alas, what shall I do? There is a gentleman here. I do not fear for my shame as much as for his life. His life? His life. Oh. Hurry, your husband's at the door. Think of some conveyance. He cannot hide in the house. Why, look. I spy a dumpster. <laughs> if he is of any reasonable size, he can climb in here. We may hide him under debris and send him by your servants down to the ditch. Oh, he's too big to go in there. Oh, what shall I do? <gasps> Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me see it. <gasps> I'll get in. I'll, I'll in. Oh, follow your friend's advice. Help me get in. Oh, Mrs. Page, oh, I love you. <laughs> Help me away. Let me climb in here. Gentlemen, we'll have some sport. Follow me, gentlemen. Tally-ho! Tis not a fashion in France. Tis no jealous in France. Follow him, gentlemen. We'll see the outcome of his search. <laughs> I don't know what pleases me more, deceiving Sir John or my husband. <laughs> what panic he was in when your husband almost opened the dumpster. I think my husband had some special knowledge of Sir John being in the house. I have never seen him so gross in his jealousy. We'll see about that. And play more tricks on Falstaff. 
His debauched disease will not be cured by this brief medicine. Mm -mm. Why don't we send that silly old bag, Mrs. Quickly, to him again and make excuses for trashing him? Suppose we offer him another hope and deliver him to another punishment. <laughs> <laughs> Capital idea. <laughs> oh, oh. I can't find him. Maybe he couldn't accomplish what he bragged about. You wrong me, Mr. Ford. Yes, I do. Heaven make you better than your thoughts. Amen. You do yourself a mighty wrong, Mr. Ford. I must bear it. Mm -hmm. There is anybody in that house, or in the rooms, or in the boxes, or in the drawers, and may heaven forgive my sins on the day of judgment. By God, no, I do. There was nobody's. Mr. Ford, what devil suggested this fantasy? It's my fault, Mr. Page. Uh, I must bear it. Well, I promise you better. And I invite you all to my house tomorrow morning for breakfast. Afterwards, we will play around the golf. But I promise you, we will make fun of you when we go in. father's approval. He objects that I am too great at birth and only wish to heal my poverty with his wealth. Besides that, he lays other bars before me. My riots past, my wild companions, and tells me that I only love you because of his money. Maybe he speaks the truth. No. I must confess that your father's wealth was the motive when I first wooed you. But in wooing you, I found you to be of more value than gold coins. And I seek now only for the simple riches of your person. Keep seeking my father's love, dear. Keep seeking it. Now, oh, here they come. Interrupt their talk, Mrs. Quigley. My nephew will speak for himself. Don't be dismayed. Nah, she will not dismay me. I'm not dismayed, but... I am afraid. Miss, uh, Mr. Slender would have a word with you? I'm coming. He is my father's choice. Oh, what a world of vile. Ill-favored folks look handsome on 300 pounds a year. Mr. Fenton, may I have a word with you? My nephew loves you, Miss Anne. Uh, that I do, as much as I love any woman in Gloucestershire. <laughs> he will maintain you as a gentle woman. That I will under the rank of a squire. And sat with you for 150 pounds. Mr. Shallow, let him move for himself. Of course. <laughs> I thank you. I leave you there. <laughs> now, good Mr. Slender. <laughs> now, good Miss Anne. What is your will? My will? <laughs> That's a pretty joke. My will? <laughs> I haven't made out my will yet, thank God. <laughs> thank heaven, I'm still in pretty good health. I mean, Mr. Slender, what is your will with me? Well, truly, for my own part, I want little or nothing to do with you, miss. <laughs> but your father and, and my uncle, they've made big plans for us. Honestly, they could tell it to you a whole lot better than I can. Uh, oh, look, here comes your father now. Why don't you ask him? My dear Mr. Slender. My dear Mr. Slender, love him, daughter, and... But wait, what is Fenton doing here? You wronged me, sir, haunting my house like this. I told you my daughter has been disposed of. Mr. Fenton, stop visiting my child. She's no match for you. But sir, if you would... No, me. no, Fenton. Mr. Shallow, son Slender, let's go in. 
Let's go in. Knowing my mind, you wrong me, sir. Good Mrs. Page, because I love your daughter in such a righteous fashion, against all checks, rebukes, and manners, I must advance the colors of my love. Please, let me have your goodwill. Good mother, do not marry me to a fool. I don't plan to. I found you a better husband. <laughs> that would be my master, uh, Dr. Caius. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be planted the earth alive and fall to death than two. Nor your enemy. I'll question my daughter about how she loves you, and as I find her, so she I shall be affected. She needs to go inside now. Her father will be angry. Farewell, sweet Anne. Farewell, my Nan. I thank you, and I beg you to give sweet Nan this ring. Oh, and here's, here's for your trouble. Well, I've been saved you good fortune. Oh, he has a kind heart. A woman would run through fire and water for such a kind heart. That uh, my master would marry Anne. Uh, or <laughs> Mr. Slender. Then again, Mr. Fenton. Well, I will do my best for all three, for I have given my promise, and I am as good for my word, especially for Mr. Fenton. Well, I must run another errand to uh, Sir John for my two mistresses. <laughs> enough to be thrown into a dumpster as so much garbage and, and tossed into a ditch. Oh, oh. Well, before I'm served another trick like that, I'll have my brains buttered and served to a dog for a New Year's dish. Oh, those rascals threw me into that ditch with as little remorse as they would have drowned a blind bitch's Puppies. <laughs> and as you can see by my size, I, I have a sort of alacrity in, in sinking. <laughs> oh, I would have drowned if this shore had not been shelvy and shallow, a fate that I abhor because, uh, uh, well, they say the water swells a man. And what a thing would I have been had I swelled. <laughs> oh, oh, I'd have been a mountain of mummy. Oh. Oh. This is quickly to see you, sir. <laughs> Let me put some wine in with that ditch water. My belly's as cold as if I had swallowed snowballs as pills to cool the kidneys. Uh, 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 uh. 
away and bring me two more. With egg, sir. Straight. I'll have no pullet sperm in my brew. <laughs> Good morning, sir. I just came from um, Mrs. Ford's. Mrs. Ford. Oh, I've had enough of Mrs. Ford. My I was thrown into a Ford. My belly is full of Ford. Alas, Goodheart, that was not her fault. Her men mistook took their erections. Well, so did I to trust a foolish woman's promise. She laminates it, sir. And she gives you to know that her husband will be away golfing this morning. And she desires you come by between eight and nine. She promises to make amends. I promise you, she will make amends. Oh, very well. I will see her between eight and nine, you say? Eight and nine, sir. Well, be gone. I shall not fail. Peace be with you, sir. Oh. 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 I wonder why I haven't heard from Mr. Brooke. He asked me to wait for him. Uh, I like his money very much. <laughs> Oh, here he comes. God bless you, sir. Oh, Mr. Brooke. You come to find out what happened between me and Ford's wife. Indeed, that is my business. Well, I will not lie to you, Mr. Brooke. I was at her house at the appointed hour. And how did you manage? Uh, did Not you? well, Mr. Brooke. Not well, sir? Did she change her mind? No, but that cuckolding fool, her husband, lying in a continuing state of jealousy, arrived at the moment of our encounter, after we had embraced, kissed, protested, and as such spoken the prologue of our comedy. <laughs> At her side, or at his heels, was a rabble of his friends, provoked and indicated by his distemper into searching the house for his wife's lover. Whilst you were there? Whilst I was there. He searched and couldn't find you? Oh, you will hear, Mr. Brooke. As luck would have it, a Mrs. Ford arrived, oh, Mrs. Page arrived, and warned me of Ford's approach. And I was conveyed into a Dumpster. A dumpster? A dumpster! I was ran, Mr. Brooke, into the foulest compound of villainous odors that ever offended a nostril. How long were you there? Oh, you shall hear, Mr. Brooke, what I have suffered to bring this woman to evil for your good. Being conveyed into that dumpster, his lackeys this of me in the name of garbage. Oh, the jealous fool stopped them at the door and asked once or twice, what was in that dumpster? Oh, I quaked in fear, lest the jealous fool had searched it. But fate, decreeing that he should become a cuckold, stayed his hand. Think of it, Mr. Brook, think of it. I am as subject to heat as butter. It's a miracle that I escaped suffocation. <gasps> and when I was half broiled in grease like a Dutch ditch, I was taken out and thrown into a ditch and cooled, glowing hot like a horseshoe. <laughs> Think of that hissing hot. Think of that, Mr. Brook. I'm sorry, sir, you suffered all this. 
For my sake? You won't attempt our game? No, Mr. Brook. I will be thrown into Mount Etna as I was thrown into that ditch before I'll give up on the wench. <laughs> her idiot husband is out golfing this morning, and I have another appointment with her between eight and nine, Mr. Brook. It's past eight already, sir. It is! I'll go then! Come back at your convenience, Mr. Brook, and you shall hear how I speed. And the conclusion will be that you shall enjoy Ford's wife. Brook shall cuckold Ford. <laughs> and away we go. <laughs> Is this a dream? Am I sleeping? Mr. Ford, awake, Mr. Ford, awake. This is what it is to be married. <laughs> this is what it is to own a dumpster. Well, I'll catch the lecher. He'll be at my house. He can't escape me now. It's impossible. He cannot creep into a coin purse or a pepper shaker. But lest the devil that guides him should aid him, I'll search impossible places. If I have the horns to make me mad, I'll be horn mad. <laughs> Oh, oh, Mrs. Ford, your own regret atones for all my suffering. I see now that you are obsequious in your love, and I submit to you that my love is to a hair's breadth its equal, not only in the simple office of love, but in its accoutrement and ceremony. <laughs> You're sure about your husband this time? He's out golfing, sweet Sir John. Oh. Oh. Mrs. Ford, are you home? Oh, step into the house, Sir John. <laughs> Good morning, neighbor. Who's at home besides yourself? Why, only my own people, Mrs. Page. Indeed. Of course. Speak louder. Well, Mrs. Ford, I am relieved you have nobody here. Why, Mrs. Page? Your husband is up to his old tricks again. He's with my husband raging against marriage and cursing Eve's daughters of every description. All of his jealous rages before have seemed like tameness, civility, and patience compared to the temper the man is in now. So I'm glad the Fat Knight isn't here. Why? Did my husband mention him, Mrs. Page? Nobody but him. He swears Falstaff was rolled out in a dumpster the last time and declares he's here now. He's drawn the golfers from their sport to prove his suspicion. So I am glad the Knight is not here. How near is my husband? At the end of the street. He'll be here soon. Oh, alas, I am undone. The night is here. <gasps> Why, then, he's a dead man. What a woman you are. Yes. A femme fatale. <laughs> <laughs> Away with him. Better shame than murder. Murder? Murder! Murder! <laughs> How near is it? No. Hey, I have an idea. What's that? Let's put him in the dumpster again. Oh, 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 not the dumpster. Not the Can I just leave before he comes? <gasps> Alas, three of Mr. Ford's brothers are watching the door with pistols. Otherwise, you might slip away before they came. Why did you come here? 
hide inside the chimney. No, they'll look there, and in every nook, cranny, chest, drawer, trunk, or vault, there is no hiding place in the house. Oh, well, don't let them find me. If you leave now, you die. Unless you are disguised. How shall we disguise him? I don't know. There's no woman's gown big enough for him. <laughs> Otherwise, he might put on a hat, a muffler, and a kerchief, and so escape. Ladies, think of something. Any enormity rather than murder. Wait! My maid's aunt, the old woman from Brentford, has a gown upstairs. <gasps> I think she's as big as he is. <laughs> and there's her hat and muffler, too. Run upstairs, Sir John. Go! Go, sweet Sir John. Go, quickly. We'll come finish dressing you. Meanwhile, put on the gown. <laughs> <laughs> I want my husband to meet him in this shape. He cannot abide the old woman from Brentford. He swears she is a witch and has threatened to beat her if she comes here. Well, heaven guide Falstaff to your husband's cudgel, and the devil guide his cudgel afterwards. <laughs> but is my husband really coming? He is. Raving about the dumpster, too. However, he heard about that. Well, I've taken care of that. I'm having the dumpster pushed off like before. It's time! We'll go dress Falstaff as the Witch of Brentford, the lying rogue. We cannot misuse him enough. <laughs> we'll just off as soon as you see them. <laughs> Don't boot that dumpster right down the ridge. Somebody call my wife. There's a... A, a cabal, a, a gang, a pack, a devilish conspiracy against me. Come out, you reprobate. Call, call me, will you? This is not right, Mr. Ford, not one indeed. Come here, wife. Come here, Mrs. Ford. Mrs. Ford, the honest woman, the modest wife, the virtuous creature who has a jealous idiot for a husband. So, I suspect without cause, do I, wife? Heaven be my witness, you do if you suspect me of any dishonesty. Well said, brazen faced hussy. <laughs> Come out, sir, reprobate! <clears throat> oh, eh, eh. He's in here somewhere! He's not in here. Or anywhere else but in your brain. Ah, Mr. Ford, you must pray and stop listening to the imaginations of your own heart's jealousies. Help me search my house one more time. If I don't find what I seek, let me forever be your table sport. Let everyone say it be as jealous as Ford, who searched a walnut shell for his wife's lover. Miss, but satisfy me once more. Please search with me. Mrs. Page, bring the old woman down. My husband is going up to the bedroom. What old woman? Why, it's just my maid's aunt from Brentford. That witch, that swindling old hag. <laughs> Haven't I forbidden her? in my house. She's here, is she? She works by charms, by spells, by things we honest men know nothing of. Come down, you witch, you hag, you Jezebel. Come down, I say. No, 
good sweet husband. Gentlemen, don't let him strike the old Mr. woman. Mr. 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 The woman is a witch indeed. I don't like it when a woman has a beard. I saw a beard under her muffler. Gentlemen, will you follow me? If I lead you on a false trail, never trust me again. Let's humor him a little farther, gentlemen. Come. Oh my. I think he beat him most pitifully. I disagree. I'd say he beat him most unpitifully. <laughs> I'd have the cudgel blessed and hung over the altar. It has done a meritorious service. What do you think? Should we, with all the warrant of womanhood and good conscience, continue to per pursue Falstaff with further punishment? Surely the spirit of wantonness has been scared out of him. <laughs> Suppose we tell our husbands how we've treated him. By all means. They'll want to punish him, and why not? There's no better ending to our joke. Come to the forge with it. Let's shape it. I'll not have things cool. <laughs> <laughs> He sent these letters to both of you at the same time? Within a quarter of an hour. Pardon me, wife. From now on, do what you will. I'd rather suspect the son of cold than you of infidelity. <laughs> That's enough now. No more. Don't be as extreme in submission as an offense. But let our plot move forward. Let our wives arrange another liaison with this reputable old reputate where they can all catch him and we can shame him for it. <laughs> I think the one they spoke of is the way to go. To meet him in the park at midnight? He'll never come. He won't come. The mind has been thrown into a ditch. He's been beaten as an old woman. His flesh has been tortured so much, how could he ever have any more desires? I agree. No. You devise how we'll treat him when he comes, and we'll devise how to get him there. Mrs. Quickly will carry our invitation again. There's a fable about Hearn the Hunter, the spirit of an old keeper here in Windsor Forest. He walks at midnight around an oak with great ragged horns and shakes a chain in a most hideous and dreadful manner. This will be our device. Falstaff will meet us disguised as Hearn with horns on his head. <laughs> <laughs> then what will we do with him? What's your plan? Anne Page, my daughter, and several more will dress like fairies. Suddenly, after we meet with Falstaff, let them rush in singing some wild song. That will be our cue to run away. Then let them encircle the unclean knight and fairy-like pinch him, demanding why, at that hour of fairy revels, he dares to tread their sacred paths in such a profane shape. <laughs> and until he tells the truth, let them pinch him and burn him with their candles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll dishorn him and mock him home to Windsor. <laughs> let it be done. Yeah. This is righteous good sport. <laughs> <laughs> Post 
this. Can I talk to you now, Mr. Fenton? My mind is heavy. I need your help, ma'am. Go away. <laughs> As I am a gentleman, I'll give you a hundred pounds in gold. <laughs> I will hear you now, Mr. Fenton. <laughs> Tonight it turns out between twelve and one, my sweet Anne will represent the fairy queen. Her father has commanded her to slip away with Mr. Slender and marry him. She has consented. Now, her mother, strongly against that match and firmly in favor of Dr. Chaos, has made plans for her to likewise slip away with the doctor and marry him. Again, she has consented. Her father has told her to dress in white so Slender can recognize her. Her mother has told her to dress in green so the doctor could know her. Well, which one does she mean to deceive, father or mother? Both, my good hostess. Now, I want you to arrange the vicar to wait at the church for Anne and I between 12 and 1 so we can be lawfully married tonight. Well, I, I, oh, I see. Husband. I'll go for the I'll get the vicar, you bring the girl, you shall not lack for a priest. gave you horns. Oh, powerful love, that at times makes a beast a man, and other times makes a man a beast. Grrr. Oh, when the gods have hot backs, what can poor men do? As for me, I am a Windsor stag, and the fattest, I think, in the whole forest. You! Who comes, my doe? Sir John, my dear. My nail, dear. Oh, my doe with the black tail. Let the sky rain potatoes. Let it thunder to the tune of green sleeves. <laughs> Let there come a tempest of provocation. I shall shelter myself here. <laughs> Mrs. Page has come with me, sweetheart. <laughs> <sighs> well, divide me like a stolen deer. Each a haunch. <laughs> my sides I will keep to myself, and my horns I bequeath to your husbands. Am I a woodsman? Do I speak like Herne the Hunter? As I am a true spirit, welcome. Alas, what noise? Heaven forgive our sins. What can this be? Away! 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 Away. <laughs> Oh, apparently the devil doesn't wish me to be damned. <laughs> Maybe he thinks all the oil in me would set all hell ablaze. <laughs> Why else would he cross me so? Fairies black and gray and green and white. You moonshine revelers, you shades of night. Find those who sleep and think not on their sins. Then pinch their mom's legs, backs, and sides, and shins. Oh, these are fairies. He who speaks to them dies. I'll close my eyes. Elves and goblins until one o'clock. Our customary dance around the earth. Of her and the hunter, let us not forget. I smell a man of Middle Earth! Vile worm, you are forgotten at your birth! <laughs> With trial fire, touch his finger and If he be chased, the flame will back ascend And give to him no pain, but if he starts it is the flesh of a corrupted heart. Ow! Ah! 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 Oh! Ah! 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 Oh no! By your sinful fantasy, by your lust and luxury, lust is but a bloody heart. Desire. 
Your Windsor wives now. Who's the cold now, sir? <laughs> Falstaff's a knave, a cocolty knave. Here are his horns, Mr. Brook. <laughs> <laughs> Falstaff has enjoyed nothing of boards but his dumpster, his cudgel, and twenty pounds, which must be returned to Mr. Brook. <laughs> <laughs> the knight's horses have been confiscated for it, Mr. Brook. <laughs> Sir John, it is unfortunate that we could never meet, but I will always consider you my dear. I'm beginning to perceive that I've been made an ass. <laughs> and those, those are not fairies. Oh, I was three or four times of the mind that they weren't fairies, but the guiltiness of my conscience and, and the sudden overtaking of my power convinced me in the, in the teeth of rhyme and reason that, that, that they were oh, fairies. <laughs> Sir John Falstaff, set aside your, your desires and then fairies will not pinch you. Ah. <laughs> well said, fairy Hugh. <laughs> and you set aside your, your jealousies. I will never mistrust my wife again. Uh. Sir John, did you imagine that even if we had thrust virtue from our hearts and given ourselves without scruple to hell, that even the devil himself could have made you our delight. <laughs> what? A bag of flax? A mixed pudding? A puffed man? <laughs> Old, cold, withered, and of intolerable entrails? One as slanderous as Satan? As poor as Job? As wicked as his wife? Full of fornications and wine? Staring and swearing? Tribbles and prabbles? Uh, well, I am your theme, so be it. Use me as you will. Indeed, sir, we will bring you to Windsor, to one Mr. Brook, whom you cheated out of money, whose pimp you would have been. Above and over what you have suffered, I think repaying Brook the 20 pounds will be a biting affliction. <laughs> 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 Be cheerful, gentle knight. You will soon drink a toast at my house where you can laugh at my wife as she's laughed at you. Tell her that Mr. Slender has married her daughter. I doubt that. If Anne Page is my daughter, by this time she's Dr. Caius's wife. There you are, Father Page. Son Slender, have you done the deed? The deed. I went to Eden to marry Miss Anne and found out she's a great lubbery boy. A boy! If we hadn't been in church, I would have knocked him down. Or him, me. Upon my life, man, you took the wrong one! You're telling me. I went with the one in white like you said and it wasn't Anne, but a boy in drag. That's the last time I'll get married in the dark. <laughs> Don't be mad at me, George. I knew your plan and dressed our daughter into green. Now she's gone off with the doctor to be married. No! Mrs. Page! Mrs. Page! Uh, what happened to you all? <laughs> oh, you know Mrs. Page? Oh, sorry. Mrs. Page! <laughs> I had cheated! I had married and got sold! Hey, 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 Hey. A blow? It is not entirely by God I am cheated! Impossible! <laughs> you went with the one in green. We? And my God, it is a boy! <laughs> oh, 
I'm so sorry about your arm. <laughs> Except for you. I shall raise all of Windsor. <laughs> this is very strange. Then who has the right, Miss Anne? Oh my God, it's Fenton! Pardon, good father. Good mother. Pardon. Missy, you took the wrong one. You should have gone with Slender. Why didn't you go with the doctor, dear? Hear the truth of it, you would have married her most shamefully where there was no exchange of love. The truth is that she and I, long betrothed, are now so joined that nothing can dissolve us. The offense that she has committed is holy because she has shunned a thousand irreligious cursed hours that a forced marriage would have brought upon her. Don't just stand there, my friends. What's done is done. There is no remedy. Money buys lands, but wives are sold by fate. I see. I see. Well, Fenton. Fenton, heaven give you joy. What can't be remedied must be embraced. Oh. When night dogs run, all sorts of deer are chased. <laughs> I will hesitate no longer. Mr. Fenton, heaven give you many merry days. Good husband, let us all go home and laugh at this over a country fire. Sir John and all. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Let it be so, Sir John to Mr. Brook. You shall have kept your word, for he tonight shall lie with Mrs. Fenton. <laughs> <laughs>